Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we are comparing the brand new LG Gram 14 inch against the MacBook Air. Now, a couple days ago, we compared it against the Pro and we realized that this is actually the more fair comparison. So today, we're not only gonna take a look at some benchmarks, but we're gonna focus on real world performance with a variety of photo editing tests, some video editing tests, web browsing, SSDs, and more. I'm also very curious about thermals because the LG did get quite hot compared to the MacBook Pro, which had a fan. Now, in this case, the MacBook Air doesn't. So we are gonna pull out our thermal camera and we're gonna get a nice look at how hot these guys get. So let's go ahead and jump in and we're gonna start out with the exteriors. One thing that has really fascinated me about this laptop is how dang light it is. It's hard to kind of tell you guys uh, over video and numbers don't always kind of give you a good representation, uh, but there's about a 40% weight difference between these. But because of that super lightweight design, it is quite flimsy. So we press down on the lid, we get a lot of flex. And then if we go ahead and open it up right here, you get a lot of flex, even pushing on the trackpad everything kind of goes down. So uh, don't expect a super nice build quality. And it does feel quite plasticky, even though this is some magnesium alloy material that the frame is made of. So you really have to ask yourself, do you prefer something that is lighter weight, but a little bit more flimsy or something that feels more premium, it's heavier, but it's a lot more solid. Go ahead and let me know down below. We also have a pretty decent difference in terms of thickness. So basically the MacBook Pro is the same thickness of the LG Gram if you completely take off this fairly thick lid, both on the back where we have our hinge and if we spin it around at the front where both wedge down, but the MacBook Air is a lot thinner. Now the LG does have some pretty massive advantages and one of those are the ports. As you guys could see on the left-hand side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. We have a headphone jack and a full-size HDMI compared to just two Thunderbolt ports. And then spinning this around, the Air just has a headphone jack compared to two super speed full-size USB ports and a micro SD card reader. And with all of those ports, the LG Gram can actually support up to four displays compared to two displays with the MacBook Air, one of which is the built-in one. So that makes the LG Gram sound like a big powerhouse, but we'll test that in just a bit. Now let's go ahead and open these up and both have really nice balance hinges for one-handed open. And let's take a look at the insides. Of course, I love the gold MacBook Air. The color really stands out, but I also dig the modern clean white look of the LG. I've been using the LG Grams keyboard and I have to say that it feels fantastic. It has a little bit more pressure required to press down. It feels very tactile and then the keys are a little bit larger than the MacBook Airs. Of course, the Apple's Magic Keyboard also feels awesome. So nobody's gonna have any complaints with either one of these. Now, if we go ahead and move down and compare the trackpads, that is where the MacBook Air is on a whole nother level. It is a magnetic trackpad, so you have an even click feel everywhere that you can actually adjust to your liking. Whereas the LG Gram, it has a standard diving board design. Now with that said, it's not too tough to press at the top, very easy at the bottom. But once again, when you start clicking, you see all of that flex there. So I've actually been using it just by double tapping without actually clicking, and it is very precise, but the MacBook Airs is still way ahead. Now, before we compare the displays, let's go ahead and take a listen to the speakers. If you have a pair of headphones, put them on and let's see how the LG can compare without having these front facing grills. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'll give you guys my opinion. And this was an absolute slaughter, if I could say that. Now, we compared the LG to the MacBook Pro last time, and the LG was actually slightly louder. The track was different, but the MacBook Air, it is actually louder than the MacBook Pro. And in this test, the LG peaked at 77 decibels, whereas the MacBook Pro actually hit 80. So yes, it is louder, but with that, the highs are a little bit more clear, the mids are more rich, and it has deeper bass as well. 
so there really is no comparison. And now let's compare the webcam and microphone quality. This is the 720p webcam from the LG Gram. And this is the webcam and microphone quality with the new M1 MacBook Air. Go ahead and let me know which one looked better and which one sounded better down in the comment section below. And now let's get into the displays where we do have some differences. Now, first off, the LG is a 14 inch display, which is nicer. It's also a 16 by 10 display. So LG did switch over from 16 by nine, which is great for this size. And we have these nice slim bezels. So it looks a little bit more clean and modern. Now the actual displays themselves have a big difference in resolution. We have basically 2.3 million pixels over here. 1920 by 1200 compared to 4.1 million pixels uh, and yes you can tell the difference as far as sharpness looking at text and icons we have almost twice as many pixels I went ahead and adjusted that top camera so we can compare the displays I maxed them out and they look quite similar I would say the MacBook Air is a little bit more bright but uh, the LG is actually pretty good for a Windows laptop. We do have a bigger difference when we compare contrast. The MacBook Air has much deeper blacks. The colors look a little bit more rich as well. It has a little bit better color accuracy. And there is a pretty significant difference in reflectivity. If we look at the LG, uh, the screen looks a little bit gray and looking at it, I look pretty much like a mirror. Whereas we move over to MacBook Air, I'm much more muted and I can focus on the actual image better. So if you're looking for a screen that is not very refle reflective, if you're gonna use it outside or in a bright room, and especially if you wanna do things like photo editing or video editing, you wanna work with colors, the MacBook Air is the better way to go. And now let's get into performance, starting out with comparing these 256 gigabyte SSDs I'm gonna go ahead and hit start here. And one thing I wanna mention is that the LG does actually have a second M.2 slot that is available for you to install an SSD whenever you want to without having to replace the original one. So that is really great. Not only do you have the main replaceable one, but another slot. That's very rare to see. Where of course the MacBook Air, everything is soldered in. So you have to make the right choice right away. Now let's go ahead and compare the speeds. It looks like at write speeds, the MacBook Air is about 100 megabyte per second faster, but in read speeds, the LG does take the win by about 800 or so megabyte per second. So definitely a little bit quicker there. And next, I wanna test out the web browsing performance. I have Google Chrome opened up on both, so I'm not testing out the native Safari or the Edge because that's what most people use and we're gonna keep it fair over here. And we have speedometer, uh, web browsing benchmark open. So let's go ahead and click start. The MacBook is flying, just finished up there. We have a score of 212. That is an absolute insane score. And you do feel it when you're web browsing compared to even the Mac Pro. Everything is super snappy. And bam, right there, the LG is finished. We have a score of 142, meaning that the MacBook Air is about 50% faster at web browsing, loading various plugins, anything else that has to happen in the background, it is definitely snappy. And now let's get into CPU and graphics performance. Now I do wanna mention that the LG Gram is not plugged in just like the MacBook Air isn't, and that is because it actually doesn't really lose performance when you unplug it compared to a lot of other Windows laptops, which is fantastic as long as that performance is good enough. So I'm gonna start at the CPU test and the LG Gram does have Intel's latest Tiger Lake processor. This is an i5 with the best G7 graphics and it's listed to go all the way up to 4.2 gigahertz compared to 3.2 on the MacBook Air. Well, we're gonna go ahead and let this test run and we'll see our score. All right, guys, we have our score and the slaughter continues. We have a score of 49.71 on the LG Gram and 76.33 on the M1 MacBook Air. That is a difference of almost 60%, a massive difference. As far as single core, the LG Gram does pretty good, uh, but we still have about 25% better performance with the MacBook Air. Now, I also wanna point out that this score right here, 49.71 is actually the highest that I've gotten running this four or five times on the LG Gram with it even being plugged in or unplugged. So that is a fantastic score, the best that I've seen. And now let's test out the graphics. This is gonna be interesting because this MacBook Air is the base model and only has a seven core GPU, not the full eight core GPU. Uh, we're running OpenCL here. This one, of course, can use Metal, so we're gonna run that. 
Let's take a look. The scores are in and the LG got 14,651, which is fairly respectable. And this is the G7 graphics, but the MacBook Air scored 19,051 metal score. So of course, metal is more efficient. Apple really optimized it. That is great. But I also ran the OpenCL test, which is a lot less efficient. And the score is still higher than the LG Gram. We got 16,811. Now, of course, that is a mixed workload. So what happens if we do a gaming test? I have GFX Bench opened up right here. I'm going to go ahead and start this test and we'll see what kind of difference we get in terms of gaming performance. And it looks like we have a much bigger difference than we did. The XPS scored 43.2 frames per second compared to 71.9 on the MacBook Air. Now that's about 65% more frames per second than the LG Gram, whereas previously we only had about a 25% difference. So of course, the, the MacBook Air, you don't have a ton of games that you could play on there, but anything that is metal enabled, it is going to perform very well. And now let's push these machines to their limits. I have Cinebench R23 open, and uh, Intel Power Gadget wouldn't work, but I have another program here so we can see the temperatures of this LG, the wattage, that's gonna be very interesting. And I also have my thermal camera so we can see how hot these machines get specifically how the LG compares to the MacBook Air which is completely fanless so let's go ahead and get a baseline reading it looks like the LG Gram the hottest part is at 32 degrees Celsius before we start and then moving over to MacBook Air we are at 28 very interesting you can see it's much cooler even though it does not have a fan. So a lot of that heat is kind of trapped inside of there. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna do our 10 minute stress test. And right away, we got about a spike to about 32, 38, 39, 41 watts. So really high wattage right out of the gate. And it looks like we peaked at about 3.7 megahertz. Uh, so pretty high but it is starting to come down and we are almost at 90 degrees Celsius. Now, the MacBook Air, I do have a terminal command open here, so we're right at 3.2 gigahertz and a total wattage of 14 and a half for both our performance cores and the weaker power efficiency cores. It's been a couple minutes and I'm starting to hear the fan on the LG Gram. Of course, the MacBook Air is fanless. We're sitting right at 89, 90 degrees Celsius on the LG compared to 84 on the MacBook Air. So it's been eight minutes so far and we have some very interesting results. First off, let's take a look at thermals. It looks like we're about 47 degrees Celsius on the LG Gram. And that's, wow, yeah, that's very, very hot right here at the top. Let's go ahead and take a look at the MacBook Air. That hottest spot right there, you guys can see it's 40 degrees Celsius. So quite a bit cooler, even though it's fanless. Now, as far as the actual temps, we have a big difference. Our MacBook Air is at 95 degrees Celsius. So it is running hot, but it's fanless. Whereas the LG, it is very interesting. The fans has been barely audible this whole time, ever since I kicked in that first time. But LG is severely limiting the wattage. We're running at 10 watts now and it was just at about 87, 89, but once it limited that wattage, we're down to 69, 68 degrees Celsius. So it's running very cool, very quiet, but very little power, and we're running at 1.6 gigahertz. So I'm very interested to see what kind of performance difference we get. All right, my friends, we have our results, and I want you guys to guess what the difference is. How much faster is this fanless MacBook Air? than the LG Gram. You guys can just wait a second and then go down, comment below. It's interesting. Now this LG actually just got its best score that it has ever gotten on this test. And yes, that is with the unplugged. It got 3,422 compared to 7,637. So yes, that is 2.25 times faster, more than twice as fast and then another, I don't know, 25% on top of it. It is absolutely insane, the difference in performance. It is shocking. So <laughs> let's go ahead and shut down Cinebench. Let's get into some real world testing. And here I have Premiere Pro opened up on both machines. Now Premiere isn't very efficient on uh, the MacBooks. Final Cut's way better, but we're gonna see how those all those benchmarks and tests 
play out in the real world. So here I have a simple 4K project. I have a couple LUTs applied, so a little bit of color correction. And let's go ahead and see how it performs. I'm gonna start out with the MacBook Air. Let's hit play. Glitch there for a second, and now we have perfectly smooth playback. Looks like our graphics is at 95%, pretty much maxed out that seven core GPU. And we are playing back at full 4K resolution right here, not at half res or anything else. Let's go ahead and see how our uh, LG Gram compares. All right, it is choppy. It is not smoothing out. And we're getting some weird artifacty artifacts as well. So it looks like the system isn't handling the playback. Looks like we're dropping, I don't know, half half the frames or so. I just enabled the debug mode here. So it looks like we're playing back at 29 frames per second, uh, 29.97, so almost perfect on the MacBook Air. Whereas we are at about 13, so it's dropping actually about two thirds, 12 and a half. So that's about three times the performance for video editing, at least the playback smoothness. Now, of course, we can go ahead and drop the, the LG Gram to say half the quality here. Let's try to play back. Definitely got a lot smoother, but it is still not running perfectly. Oh, there you go, actually. It just hit right there, 30. So definitely a lot better and visually, um, you could still use it a half mode on a screen this size, there's not a problem. So now let's go ahead and stop this and I'm gonna go ahead and export both these projects and we'll see how they compare. And we are off, I am using Adobe Media Encoder, that way that's gonna tell us how fast it's going and roughly how long it's gonna take. So it's been a few minutes and our estimated time has calmed down now. It's gotten a lot more stable and we have a pretty big difference. And I don't think I wanna wait this long for the LG Gram. Uh, based on what Premiere Pro is telling me right now, it's gonna take roughly 30 minutes until this encode is finished. Whereas with the MacBook Air, it's looking like it's gonna be about nine and a half minutes, 9.20. I've actually done this encode already on the MacBook Air. It took nine minutes and 30 seconds compared to right around 28 to 30 minutes on the LG Gram. So just like in the timeline where we saw this was playing back at 12 and a half, 13 frames per second compared to 30 at full quality, I guess uh, exporting, we have a similar result. So basically three times longer, three times worse the performance on the LG Gram in terms of video editing. So that is a massive difference. And now let's get into photo editing. I have Lightroom Classic opened up and I have to mention that this is optimized for the Intel processor. It's not yet optimized for Apple's M1 chip, so that does give the LG Gram an advantage. And here I have 50, 42 megapixel files open. And let's go ahead and see how our real world performance is. So let's go ahead and punch in on these massive files. And it looks like cropping in here really tight, the performance is basically identical, no issues. And then now, how about switching between these massive files, which all of these actually have a bunch of editing effects and color changes stacked on here. So each time we switch, there's a lot of things going on in the background. And the performance looks to be about the same. Sometimes our M1 switches faster, like that was actually a big difference. Sometimes the LG is a little bit quicker but pretty good performance. Now let's grab a brush and see how that performance is because it uses a lot of GPU power. And that is actually nice and smooth on the LG. We have maybe have a tiny bit of delay at first and then it smooths out. No issues there. And on our M1 Mac, basically the same. So once again, we have maybe a tiny bit of delay at first and then nice and smooth. And now let's go ahead and export these images. This pushes the graphics and the CPU, the RAM, everything. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit export here, hit my timer, and let's see how long it takes. All right, we are close here on the MacBook Air. It's right there, basically two minutes and 41 seconds is where it stopped at. And it looks like we're about 75% done on the LG. We're getting close here. It was really dragging its feet. I think once the wattage turns down, like we showed you, oh, there you go, got done. Four minutes and 17 seconds. I almost missed it there. So we have two minutes and 41 seconds compared to four minutes and 17 seconds. That's not twice as long 
but it's kind of getting there. So that is just shocking difference in performance. All right, guys, so what is our final verdict? Which one of these machines should you buy? Honestly, I may have sounded biased throughout this video. I was trying not to. You guys maybe saw the one against the MacBook Pro. At this price point, it is just a slaughter or it is just embarrassing. We have the $999 MacBook Air, sometimes even $950. We'll go ahead and link it down on Amazon below compared to 1200 bucks. And the build quality is better. The speakers are a lot better. The trackpad is better. Uh, the webcam is better. The microphone's quieter, but the sound quality is better. The display is way better. Our graphics performance is way better. The CPU performance is way better. Real world video editing, even in Premiere Pro is better. It's faster in Lightroom as far as exporting. Uh, the actual editing performance is the same, even though it's not yet optimized. Uh, I mean, it's just, how could you buy the LG Gram? Now, of course, LG Gram has all those ports. It supports better external monitors. Um, as far as battery life, that's one thing I did not cover. It's rated at 25 hours of battery life, but in the real world, um, Dave Lee, he said he got about nine hours compared to the MacBook Air. It's rated at 16, but it gets around 13 or so. So real world battery life is also better. I guess if you need to upgrade your M.2 down, later down the line, uh, or if you want a slightly larger display, or if you really want Windows, you should buy it. It's still a great Windows-based system, but the MacBook Air, for the money, it is just an absolutely incredible machine. I would just highly recommend it. So you guys let me know your thoughts down below. Click that circle above if you guys wanna to subscribe to see more videos like this one and help us reach our goal of 600,000 subscribers. That would be amazing. We have a couple great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.